Dr. H here. This lesson will go over the online Drosophila genetics lab, which we will be performing in class. The web link to the lab is found on our course wiki, and there you will also find the course code that you will need to register as a student and join the class. So once you get in, you uh, the main screen here is kind of our little lab setup with a uh, computer uh, to do all kinds of stuff like analyze the results and order new fruit flies. Incubator, where we will keep the flies while they are hatching and mating and growing. Microscope, to look at the flies because they are they're pretty small, so we, need, we like looking at under the dissection scope to see them. Calendar, helps us keep track of the days. And trash can, very useful uh, when the incubator starts to get full. Every now and then you need to clean everything out and start over. So first thing you'll need to do is go over to the computer and click on it and that will take you to this screen, the computer screen. And a few options here. Uh, this one just takes you back to the main lab screen. And the analyze results, after we start ge generating some interesting data, we can look at the numbers over here. Uh, first thing we need to do, obviously, is order some flies. So click there, and that takes us to the order screen. Uh, and there's all kinds of choices here as far as what we want to do. Um, obviously, we'll need to order one male and one female. Here you can kind of see the characteristic female uh, Drosophila body type, kind of a larger abdomen here, uh, kind of a little pointy uh, end at, at the back of the abdomen here. So let's pick a trait that we want to color, uh, that we want that we want to study. Uh, I think I decided to look at wing size and look at this apteris. Uh, apteris is a term which means wingless. So there's our wingless female. Uh, we click here to add it to the cart, and it shows up up here. Okay, female apteris wings. And then we get the male. Okay, and you can see characteristic male body shape. Uh, a little bit more rounder on the abdomen here. And also on his front legs, you see these uh, little things called sex cones, which are important in the mating behavior of the fruit fly. So we ordered uh, the mutant female. Uh, we'll just keep the male as wild type. We'll add that one to the cart. Uh, click up here on the shopping cart button, and that lets us review what we're ordering. So female, apteris, wingless, male's wild type. Go to checkout. And yes, we really want to order those. And here they are on our lab. They come in a little box. We click on it, and the flies are shaken out into a new mating jar. So here's our mating jar. We uh, kind of put the mouse over it. It reminds us what's in there. So we click on it. It goes in the incubator. And you see the calendar starts moving here. It takes about 14 days, about two weeks, for the flies to mate, the eggs to hatch, and to go through all of the different life stages of the Drosophila. So once we have that, let's see, open up the incubator, get the mating jar out, and the flies are knocked out with a uh, chemical called ether, which anesthetizes them, basically puts them to sleep, so that we can look at them under the microscope without them all flying around. So here's all our flies, and we click sort, a little paintbrush comes in, and they get sorted into two piles. So the, the program automatically sorts them by sex, which is not always important for our crosses, but it might be in some of the more interesting ones. So you can click on these piles and we can look at them. So over here, we have our females, and they are all wild type, and we see we have 604 of them. So down here, we have a couple options. We can add the note to the notebook. So it's always a good idea when you generate data to add it to the notebook. It's kind of recording your observations. You always want to do that as a scientist. Uh, we're also going to put this a female into a new mating jar. So this this fruit fly here would be representative of the F1 generation. So mating them together will give us the F2. So we'll do that. Uh, zoom back out, and that'll give us the look at both of the piles. And we'll look over here, and these are all the males. And not surprising, these are also wild type. So we'll add him to the notebook. And we'll also grab one of those males and put them in a new mating jar. So we'll zoom out. Uh, from this screen, we can send that into the computer. Uh, since everything is wild type, it's really not all that interesting. So we're, we're not going to worry about sending it 
to be analyzed at this point. So we'll return to the lab, and now we have our new mating jar. Uh, female wild type, male wild type. Remember, these are the F1 generation from the Apteris. So back in the incubator, you kind of see the life cycle here. The eggs are hatching, the larvae crawling around here in the media. They crawl up, form their pupa. They're kind of like the uh, cocoon in a, in a caterpillar. Now we have some adult flies, so let's take a look at them. Let's see, it was this one. So take them out. They get anesthetized under the microscope, and we'll see what we get. So we'll sort them. Now we have four piles. See, this one is the female wild type. There's 484 of those. I'll probably add that one to the notebook. Zoom back out. The other big pile is 442 males, which are all wild type. So we'll add that to the notebook and zoom back out. Uh, the two smaller piles. This one here, these are the males, the Apteris males, 146 of those. And the other small pile, which is this one, is 142 Apteris females. Add to the notebook. And now that we have some interesting numbers here, let's zoom back out and go to the computer and see what our numbers tell us. So we'll send that to the computer and we would like to go to the computer now. So click over here on Analyze Results. And here's our cross. Parents uh, are both wild type. Uh, we can ignore sex since we're, we're pretty sure this is not a sex-linked trait. And we see that we get about 76% wild type and about 24% after us. Very close to a 3 to 1 ratio as we would expect for a monohybrid F2 generation. Okay, so this is the monohybrid's pretty straightforward. Now uh, we can go back here and maybe we can look at doing a dihybrid cross. First, I'm going to go back to the lab and clean everything up. So just hit the clean out button and that gets rid of everything in our incubator. So now we can go and order some more flies. Let's see, I really like the uh, Apteris mutant, so we'll stick with Apteris. And let's do something else interesting. Let's do a different body color. Let's look at this ebony body. So now our female will be wingless and have a different body color. So we'll add her to the cart. And again, the male we will just keep as wild type. And we will check out. Yes, we really want to order them. Here they are. Unpack them. They go into the new mating jar, into the incubator, wait two weeks. So you can kind of get an idea of why I like doing this lab online and not actually ordering the flies because all of these two week waiting periods would really take a long time to do this. So let's take a look at our results here. And if we think of this as the F1 cross for our dye hybrids, you can kind of get an idea of what we should be seeing we see everybody's wild type. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add these to a new mating jar. Okay, there's, what well, I just grabbed the female. So let's go grab a male, put him in a mating jar, in the mating jar, and go back to the lab. And there's our new mating jar that will go in the incubator. Another two weeks go by. As we patiently wait, listening to our flies buzz all around. And they're finally done, so we can take a look at this one. All right, so it kind of, can get a little bit hard to keep your matings all straight. That's why you always want to try to clean up whenever it gets a little bit too full. And I think the program actually locks you out if you have too many uh, mating vials in the incubator. And now we have all these piles. What is going on here? Uh, instead of looking at all, I mean, we, we can kind of see the phenotypes here in the numbers. Let's just send the data to the computer and just look at the numbers. Uh, so we can go to Analyze Results. And again, since neither of these traits we believe to be sex-linked, we can pretty safely ignore sex. And we see our numbers here, 702, 247, uh, Apteris 233, and Apteris Ebony 73. So the question is, 
is that our expected 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. How we test that is we do right here, this is what's called a chi-square analysis. And this is a statistical test which allows us to say, you know, is our hypothesis correct? So here, we, where it says enter our hypothesis, we just put in the numbers that we expected. So we expected 9 uh, wild type out of 16, 3 uh, ebony body and normal wings, 3 asterisk wings and normal body color, and one double mutant, Apteris and Ebony. So click down here, test this hypothesis, and it does all these calculations for you. The number that you need to look at is this one right here, the level of significance. So we got a level of significance of 0.8. That's very good. Uh, as long as, it, as it says down here, as long as that level of significance is greater than 0.05, we are, our hypothesis is correct. So these data fit in nicely with what we expected. And here we get the expected results from this number of flies. We expected seven, well, we expected about 706 wild types. We got 702. So we are very close. So let's take a look at the notebook and see what kind of data shows up in there. Okay, here we are in the notebook area of the website, and you can see all of the data that we chose to add to the notebook, which really should be almost everything that you do, uh, is showing up in here. Uh, parents show up here, uh, male wild type, it looks like I may have cut off the female somewhere. Uh, offspring from cross one, remember this was our first monohybrid cross that we went through. Uh, female wild type 598, male wild type 624. So all the numbers are here, uh, pictures of what the fruit flies look like, what the, um, what the phenotypes are, are included here. So one thing is it's probably not a bad idea as you're working through all your crosses to kind of keep a track of the cross numbers and why you are performing that cross. You know, is it, is it an F1? Is it an F2? Is it a test cross? Um, is it a reciprocal cross? So you're switching the mutant from the male to the female? You know, just try to keep, just try to remember in your in your head why you are doing that particular cross at that particular time. Uh, where the notebook really becomes useful is when it's time to write the lab report, and that is right here. And the lab report kind of cues you into what you're supposed to, what answers you're supposed, or where you need to put answers and what questions you should be dealing with. Uh, in the white space here, this is what shows up. Whatever you put into the white space is what's going to show up on your report. Uh, the pink things here are all kind of cues to tell you what needs to go in there. So you can write a little introduction, put your hypothesis, uh, what sort of model do you think this gene is following, what are, what are these traits following. Experimental design, this is where you can show what you did, how you did just kind of go over what was actually done in the lab. And everything is written down here, and I'll uh, make this a little bit more clear. And here you can uh, add images for your flies and drag pictures over. So if we want to add another fly in there, just type, just hit the add new results. And that should have opened up a new box. Here we go. I need to hit here first and click on the fly and it puts it right in there. So now I have this fly there. Okay, so it's pretty easy to make a you know, fairly nice looking lab report. Um, and then you obviously wanna hit save, that saves it onto the server. And that's how I will be giving you your grade. So hope that helps you get started on this lab and we look forward to doing it.